Hello, folks. Ryan here with Natural Aquariums. Um, welcome to the Wednesday night planted tank stream. Um, here with us today is uh, my buddy, uh, Danny Weshi. Hey, Danny, how's it going? Hello. Thanks for how are you doing tonight? Ryan. I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Nice. Glad to hear I that. Actually, uh, yes, yeah, since I had your stream tonight, I uh, my boss actually, you know, I was like, hey, I can't. I can't work Wednesday evening. I need to have that that night off so I can make a live stream. So I opened today, and I ended up just basically being a cashier. And so I lucked out and didn't have to work like any of the heavy stuff on the truck at all. Oh, okay, okay, good. I'm I'm glad it, <laughs> it was a pretty out. good day. <laughs> nice, nice. I was actually I was feeling a little guilty about it because yeah, when I first asked you, you're like, oh, I don't know, I, you know, I got to check, and hope, yeah, I probably can like switch around my schedule and then yeah. i was th thinking man he shouldn't have to switch his schedule maybe i could just do like a half hour stream and then whenever he gets off and gets home pop back on and do it or something and then yeah. i never told you that and then you got back to me and you're like yeah i got it all worked out and everything and I mean, so, like, yeah, it, it really wasn't a big it. deal just, just be like hey I, I need to you know work earlier that day instead of later just to make yep. sure that happens like yep but I mean, also like it's it's nine thirty my time. So even if I had to close the store, like I could have potentially closed it really fast and like just been like fifteen minutes late or something like that. Uh -huh. but, cool. Yeah, that's not bad. So your the store closes at nine. Yeah, we mm -hmm. close at nine, and then uh, we have like roughly you know an hour's worth of time to you know finish everything and get all the. Drawers counted down and self-washed clean, the store all cleaned and stuff. Yep. Yeah, so for anybody, you know, listening now or, um, you know, li listening later to this stream, if you don't know, Danny uh, works at a pet store, correct? Yeah, I work at uh, Pet Supplies Plus, one in St. Louis, Missouri. And I, I like the job for the most part, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that you're you're certainly an animal lover, so that's you know got to be a, a cool thing to you know be around, uh, you know animals all day and and uh, you know people that are into animals and pets and stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm getting a lot of networking and stuff too. Just getting to talk to all the different customers and stuff coming in. There's mm -hmm. this one guy today that I I don't know. Um, he he came up and he had. He had that like EcoFix sludge destroyer from API oh, okay. and like the pond water clarifier or whatever from API. Had okay. them both. And I'm just like, oh, you got a cloudy pond, huh? And he's like, yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, man, like, yeah, I don't know what happened to mine. Like mine was good and it was like crystal clear. And then we had like a small storm hit and I guess it like messed up the substrate or something. Like the next day it was just all covered in algae. The water was all cloudy. Everything was all messed up. And the next thing I know, he's asking me like, so do you clean ponds? I'm like, y you mean like me personally? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, no. But, you know, there probably is kind of a need for something like that, isn't there? And he's like, yeah, there is. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, got the wheels turning, huh? Right. I'm getting the wheels turning. I, I like to think of different sorts of business ideas. Hey, Shanna, uh, more natural aquariums, Jimmy P. Bateson, everybody in the chat. How's it going? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been trying to think of different sorts of business ideas. And I even kind of mentioned to the guy. Okay, uh, it doesn't look like either of us won on Dan's Fish, so I can go ahead and close that window now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I didn't uh, win either? Yeah, neither of us won. Okay, well, then forget it. <laughs> I don't remember what the name was, but it wasn't either of us. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, congratulations to whoever that was. And, yeah, thanks for shouting out some people there. I, th I see S is here now as well. S, hey. But yeah, like, uh, I was telling them that, like, I'm kind of, you know, I have my YouTube channel and I'm kind of using it as sort of like a, 
a portfolio of, you know, different things that I can do or whatever, you know? So yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. it's just like, if somebody wanted me to set up a terrarium for them, like I'm, I'm working really, really hard on this vivarium and it's taken me a long time. Cause I, I got to wait for some stuff to dry. And then it's also like finding the time to, you know, work on that while, you know, still wanting to tune into people's live streams and do yeah. all my water changes and things like that. And since yeah. I want to film everything I'm doing, I can't film what I'm doing while I'm listening to a live stream. So right. I yep. have to like put that off. Well, unfortunately, you can, can only do two of those things at once, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So yeah, and then it's like course... once I get all this done, it's just like, yeah, if somebody wants me to build them a terrarium for their creature or whatever, I have like a general idea of how much it cost me. I can show them a video mm -hmm. of like basically everything that I did and, you know, all that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You've got some beautiful fish tanks I've seen before that. So yeah, that you, you already got that on there and wow. Vivarium, huh? Tell us a little bit about that. What, what are you like, what are you working with? Well, so or I got, a, if you uh, want, if you want to hang on until your your video comes out, that's cool too. Oh no, it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, all the lights are off. It's not like I could, you know, show you guys a sneak peek yeah. anyway. No, but, no. Uh, if you want to just tell us about so, it. So, yeah, I have a uh, I have a golden gecko. They are. Um, I don't. I haven't done like a whole lot of super in depth research, but they're like they're a subtropical gecko, kind of similar to crested geckos they hang out in like the tree areas of forests so it's like nice. humid but not like super hot like you know 75 degrees ish so they don't necessarily need a heat lamp if you keep your room or your your house warm enough which i do and uh they don't even need a a uvb lamp as long as you're supplementing calcium into their diet because they're mm. nocturnal like crested geckos as well so they just hide most of the time during the day and then they come out at night so they're not basking in the sun or anything like that like a lot of other reptiles do gotcha okay and yeah, that makes they're, sense. they're omnivorous more towards like fruits so like they eat like crickets and you know mealworms things like that and then you can make them like rapashi and uh other sorts of like fruit and mealworm like powdered mm -hmm food stuff like yeah. that so sweet stuff and proteins huh yeah yeah nice. so uh i was we got those in at the store that i worked at and there was two of them and i just thought they were really cool and the name is golden gecko but i'm just like eh, it looks more purple to me and they they oh. really do like most of the time especially the males they'll actually be more of like a dark purple versus like a, a, a gold per se. Wow. And uh, the, so I thought they were really cool. And the way he kind of moved around, it just like, it reminded me of uh, Randall from Monsters, Inc. Oh, okay. He would kind of change colors a little uh -huh. bit and then they just yeah. move really fast on the walls uh -huh. and stuff. So, yeah. uh, so I was like that, that one right there, that's Randall. And so nice. I called him Randall ever since he was at the store. <laughs> and then uh, this this kind of regular that came in kind of ended up working for us for a short period of time, but it didn't work out very well. Um, he had, you know, ended up buying Randall. And I was like, no, you got to keep the name. And he's like, oh, yeah, totally. I'm going to keep the name Randall. Nice. He kept him for a while. And, you know, after he lost his job and different stuff, he ended up, you know, having to downsize and different things. So I ended up taking Randall. He gave me his whole setup and everything. Oh, wow. I've been taking good care of him, you know. Mm -hmm. And, but it's just like, as soon as I got him, it's just like, okay, now I want to build him an active vivarium, terrarium, whatever, yep. you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I started working on one and so it it's a 30 gallon kind of like tall cube set up with a, a front open door. Oh, cool. I think it, it's like 18 by 18 by 24, I believe. Nice. Yeah. Sounds awesome. And uh, so it's got probably a five or six inch uh, lip on the front so it can hold water. 
And uh, so I'm basically, I'm building like a little like waterfall that's going to come down in the back, like a gorge waterfall oh, wow. with like all moss and stuff. And then there's nice. going to be a nice, there's a nice branch that's co coming across for him to like rest on and stuff and go up to his food area. And I have an idea for like a little stream from the waterfall to come up to the front and they'll have like a false bottom and there'll be just a little water feature on the front that's going to look like an actual, like, front of, like, a lake or something like that. Okay. I, there is enough space where I could potentially add fish, but I don't plan on adding any fish in there. Right. Yeah. And it's just going to be nice and planted, full of a whole bunch of different types of moss. I I used a, a plant identifier app on my phone to figure out all these different types of mosses I have. I have like seven okay. different types of moss that I just collected locally. And just like nice. five minutes down the road where there's the river, it's awesome. Yep. Freebie. Yeah. Nice. So I'm working really hard on that. I've I've already built pretty much most of the hardscape. And uh, it's just, you know, tearing off extra bits of the uh, expanding foam and then, mm -hmm. you know, filling it in with all the, the moss and everything and getting every uh, Oh, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing hard work on it, but it's taken a good long time and a lot longer than, like, setting up a fish tank. You know, every mm -hmm. time I've set up a fish tank, I've pretty much, you know, gathered everything that I've needed over a couple different days, going to different stores, you know, getting – getting my yeah. driftwood from over here, getting my sand from over here and all that. And then I have everything, you know, I just set up the fish tank all in one day, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but this, this yeah. is taking a long time. Uh -huh. I've, I've already put like two weeks in on it. So oh, yeah, <laughs> got, it's got some time to go still. It sounds like too, huh? Yeah. 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 But most of the, most of the hard work is done. Mm -hmm. Now it's yeah. just, uh, now it's just designing the the plant work and all that. Mm -hmm, the mosses and whatnot. That's interesting yeah. that uh, – do you know what that uh, plant identifier app's called by any chance or anything? Uh, I never thought of looking up apps for that. I have okay. this, like, Google Lens on my camera on my phone, and I've actually used that for some aquatic plants and stuff. Oh, you went sideways. Oh. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm looking. <laughs> That's all right. It's called Picture This. Picture This. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I was going to write it down, but I could, I, I, I could always, yeah. like, you know, go back and watch the stream there. Hey, and he's right. He's right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> No, no, I asked you to. to it's weird doing everything name, through my phone, but yeah, it's called, it's called so. Picture This, and uh, I think it maybe does even more than just plants, but mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's relatively accurate. I had right. to take a couple different photos of some because I knew that they were two different types of mosses by just looking at them, mm -hmm. but it was still like saying no, they're they're both hypnomoss, and it's just like no. This one is most likely hypnomoss based off the pictures you're showing. I'm just but not getting a good enough photo of this one. Uh huh. Yeah. And it gives you like three options, or you can even like correct it yourself. But oh. it's just like if I'm yeah. using the app to try and identify it, uh -huh, why do right. you think I know what it is? <laughs> well, you might find out through other resources, I guess, you know. And that's yeah. what I've done with like the Google lens. Cause th what that'll do is just like uses my camera and then yeah, you, you hit a thing and then it pulls up some like search options in Google of what it thinks yeah. it is. So it pulls up a bunch of pictures and uh, then, yeah, I just kind of go, no, that's not it. That's not, Oh, Oh wow. This kind of looks like it. And then, yeah, just verify like you're doing there. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there's an app that just comes with, you know, uh, Android phones now. Mm -hmm. the, yep. When you just take a picture, you can just you, what is that? The Google Glass or no not glass, glass? Maybe yeah. I thought it was lens no, or something, glass. but I think it might Google be glass. Lens. Google oh. Lens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, all I was using. But glass was those remember. glasses that they came up with that's that right. had like the little thing when that's they were right. trying to step into yeah. the future. That was Steph a flop. I think. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Saw a 3G monster fish gal in here. Hello, Lori. Kenny E so, with Anakin. So Steven. Steven, that was very cool of you to do that giant giveaway. Deborah, DVD. <laughs> Fishy mine. Oh, Fishy Mon too, huh? Fishy Mon has that from Munda Moss. Oh, yeah, there we go. I see him now. Yeah. So that that was one of the mosses that uh, you had, you were working with, too, or something? <laughs> no, it's a joke. Uh, you know, like, for Mon- Monday. Oh, <laughs> well, I better be careful with Fishy Mon. I should go there. Whoa! Man down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fish dreams, hello. He's back. Back again. Upright and on the camera. So yeah, you're Lots talking about you know, difficulties tonight. <laughs> hey, it makes it more exciting. I like it, you know. Uh you you were talking about, you know, networking and stuff. And then I remember um like Gary Lang had come into your store, right? Yeah. I mean, he's yeah, been there a couple times. Mm-hmm. He mainly he comes in for cat litter and stuff yeah. mostly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he was there one day, you know, and they had a couple bags of cat litter in his cart and stuff. But we were having the fifty uh, percent off sale, and he was looking at the twenty longs and stuff. I'm like, hey there, mm-hmm. Mister Lang, I'm looking <laughs> at the the tanks there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And he's like, are you a Masai member? I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we just kind of started talking a little bit, and uh, he was he was asking if uh if the you know tanks were still like tempered glass, and I was like, honestly, I don't know. Right. But, I mean, I know they're Aquion tanks. I have several of them. They're they're really good. And they work work great. So. Yep. Yeah, I was wondering. I I don't remember like in his fish room if there you know I've seen him on like you know aquarium co-op and stuff like that but uh um if, if he had like drilled tanks or not i'm, I'm assuming that maybe that's ask, why he's asking about him being tempered oh, yeah probably uh, yeah yeah i have and no then, idea yeah then you're uh you're you're you're, you're mentioned you're a member of mass i well, I'm not officially a member yet. Okay. I haven't actually done that, but yeah. I went to the ACA and then like I've now gone to the swap, and mm-hmm. so I need yeah. to actually go and officially like start paying my dues and stuff. And become a mass <laughs> yeah. member. Yeah, yeah, get involved and and become a member, and yeah, for sure. You know, I, I, I yeah. Have you been to any of their meetings or just kind of the swap and the ACA and stuff that they hosted? Well. I'm I'm kind of new to uh, like the the big realm of fish keeping, you know. Mm-hmm. I kept fish when I was a kid, and I got yeah. you know back into fish keeping when I bought my house, and uh, so through YouTube and connecting more about through YouTube is when I've been finding out about these things, and so like the ACA was mm-hmm. my first event that I ever went to and it was it was hosted by Maasai this year right but I mean it, it's it goes all over the place every year and next mm. year is going to be in Louisville with the big like you know the fantastic four it was it's called the triple crown event but now you know this Ford yeah because of Gary Lang uh, and Gary Lang, Lang group is there yeah. as well mm-hmm. so yep yep it's just yeah, a uh, fantastic four of fish Fantastic four. I like that. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I was geeking out because, yeah, uh, you know, I I had uh, emailed Gary Lang to let him know that, you know, I'd help spread the word because he was he's trying to get, you know, people to buy tickets for that event because you can buy them through any of those four organizations. Right. And so, you know, anybody who feels the need or, you know, is into rainbow fishes to uh, to to you know purchase their tickets through the the 
uh, North American, Australia, New Guinea, fishes or whatever, Engfa. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, you know, I told them. Australian, them, you know, New Guinea. Yeah, what is it? A-N-G-F-A. A-N-G-F-A, yeah. Australia, New Guinea, fishes. Fish Association. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Uh-huh. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, you know, he said, you know, if anybody can help spread the word and stuff. And then, you know, I, I emailed him and told him that he, he did. And, and he emailed me back. And just that I was all nerd now, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, Gary Lane yeah. emailed me, you know. Yeah. I mean, man, like he, he's such a cool dude to just talk to. And but he is like he's very direct and yeah. he's uh, like he, he doesn't waste time in conversation. You know, mm -hmm. like, so I, I kind of like, he was at the swap and I kind of went and approached him and was looking at stuff and I was looking at his rainbow fish that he was selling in his bag. And he's like, you know, if you're interested, I do have some pictures. And I'm just like, you know, I'm all right about that, but I do have a question for you, Mr. Lang. Uh -huh. yeah. Those Australian rainbows they sell at Petco or whatever. What do you like? And before I even was like, what are they or whatever, like yeah. got to describe any color. He's just like, most likely Splendida. And I'm just like, or, is it, or and then I was going to say something else. like, or a hybrid of the sorts or whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, see, that's exactly what I was thinking. It was probably a hybrid involving the Splendida. But, you know, th thanks you, because I had some people that were wanting to know. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, they're, they're more than just rainbow fish, even if they're, I guess, if they're hybridized, which, you know, as you probably know, in the uh, rainbow world is is yeah. <laughs> not not so cool in, in yeah. hybridizing and stuff. So. Right. Hopefully they move towards yeah yeah that they are more pure and or they that was that. exactly something that he did say too was that he, after like thirty years of trying to convince them he's they're mm -hmm. finally moving into more of pure strains of rainbows because awesome. they That's sell good. better yeah 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 I mean and there's you know they're they're beautiful fish on their own. You know, they don't yeah. need to be <laughs> kind of messed yeah. with to make it that way. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's lots of cool guppies that people make and stuff. And I'm oh, all right. for that, you know. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I have a couple hybrids, you know, mm -hmm. I, my, my OB is a hybrid. And then sure. my yeah, OB made it with a, with a strawberry peacock. And so I ended up with hybrid hybrids. And mm -hmm. yep. And then uh, I just, you know, sold. Uh, six of those to a friend of mine uh the other day and he said they're doing well and they're already doing little mating dances and stuff oh nice because i out of the six i caught i gave him the dominant male in the tank and then uh i there was two that were possibly male and then the the other three were like for sure females Okay. So I tried to give him a little bit of a mix, but I wanted to make sure that he got at least one for sure male. So I gave him the dominant male, and mm -hmm. he he said he's been doing his little dance on the one side, keeping the females on the other, doing the things. So I was just like, "All right, man, they're already getting to work. That's <laughs> awesome." Nice. That's very cool, yeah. Especially for you to give away your, you know, one of your prettiest fish, probably. Yeah, I mean, I've been having kind of trouble getting rid of some of those cichlids they've been like getting yeah. too big for their tank and i'm running out of space and mm -hmm. but i mean they do have a really nice orange coloration a couple small little black spots that come out and then the males for sure have this like blue iridescence that just covers their entire body over the orange oh very nice Where, like as they swim it's just like orange blue orange blue it's just it's mm -hmm. awesome awesome Awesome. And, and something that camera just can't quite pick up. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult, you know, that, yeah, I would, I'm shooting stuff with my cell phone and everything. And, yep. um, yeah. Do you do you use any sort of fancy camera or just cell phones? Oh, no. or? It's all from my cell phone, my Motorola really? cell phone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, mine's a Motorola as well. 
Um, so even like those, your rock videos and stuff all with yeah. the cell phone. Yeah. Now my tripod, my little, like I have one of those like little bendy type tripod things uh-huh. that yep. like, you can stick and it's about had enough. One of the legs <laughs> is like super floppy now. And that's why I'm kind of having issues getting my phone to like balance yep. as it is. Yeah. And, uh, but I, yeah, I, on my last one with algae, I actually like hooked the tripod up on the neck of the guitar and I had I some fun that. with that. And I, I was yeah. trying some different stuff with different camera angles. It's like, mm-hmm. I got this grippy tripod. Why not, you know, use it more? But now I need to get another one. Yeah, <laughs> it's taken some abuse. Yeah, yeah, that's what, you know, I mean, I know that. I love the algae's like my favorite of all of these songs and stuff. You know, I like what Roxanne did and Stephen P and stuff, but I love that video. And, and I know it's a little, I I know it's a little hard rock for some people, but like, I just want to tell them if you don't really like the music, you know, if you're not a fan of that uh, genre, you know, like mute it and just watch the like cinematography. Cause I love how, yeah, you put the, you know, put the camera on the neck and, and I mean, it looks like a, a rock video, you know, <laughs> I, I took some, uh, some, some inspiration from a lot of different rock videos. Uh, you know, Leo, Leo Morricelli, the, uh, the guy from Frog Leap Studios, he does some kind of comedic type stuff with his videos. Like I've thought about getting one of those like little kids drum sets just uh-huh. so I can play drums in nice. the music yeah. videos too like i've um, even thought about just using my rock band drum set but that would look yeah. so stupid <laughs> it would be funny man if i had I mean, the symbols on there maybe but yeah. i don't have the one with symbols i just have like the four pads so uh-huh. it'd be totally lame yeah I, well i was gonna tell you on the tripod thing you know i just got mine at like the goodwill and there were, it's not perfect. The little crank thing where you go up and down by itself, you know, that like that was missing or something, but you know that, and then I just bought a little cell phone holder off of Amazon for it. And that's been right. working pretty well for me. But of course you got it. You got that bendy thing that, you know, you can yeah. do other things with too. So that's so it's, cool. it's convenient to, you know, be able to grab onto a lot of different stuff, but it doesn't have mm-hmm. a lot of length. So yeah. When I'm like filming in my fish room, I have it connected on top of one of those like step ladders. Okay. Yeah. It's you're just like gripping onto something. the handle on the top. <laughs> and just, yeah. you know, sitting up there on top of it with my camera filming. Sure. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I have one. So I try channel. really hard to get the, the silver to not reflect off the, the, the glass of the mm-hmm. tank. Mm-hmm. And that, that yep. that's why I have a lot of different weird camera angles and stuff too, because filming straight on, you know, you just yeah, you it's just get there. straight reflection. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah, I have one tank that sits kind of like above our our fireplace on this mantle, and it's a it's a forty breeder. It's my uh, plant farm tank, and. I mean that thing like when I'm standing up, like the bottom of the tank is like here. So wow. when I do any maintenance, I, I'm on like one of the step ladders and stuff. And then even with my tripod, I got the legs all the way extended, the neck all the way up, and then it's just about perfect there. But it's like maxed out as high as that thing will go. So wow. yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes to even get a little bit of a higher angle, I'll take the the step ladder and balance it on top of my little office chair that I have in my fish room. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Wow. I like up there. Nice. You can wheel it around to get some good like <laughs> yeah. action shots. Man, how much better filming I could get if I was two people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that uh, that like I said, that's amazing that you did that with with all all by yourself there, you know. I got my son here. He did, he makes helps me make a lot of videos, but I I don't know about him holding the camera. He's a little too hyper for that business. Yeah, I don't trust anybody to hold the camera. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, he was asking me, like, who you got on the, the stream this week? I'm like, oh, Danny Weshy. And he was calling you Fishy Weshy. Okay. <laughs> I kind of like that. It. I don't know. <laughs> yep. 
better than a lot of the other names that I've heard over the years. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure people have mispronounced your name a many a time. Oh, yeah. I mean, when people say Wesh, at least that's like an acceptable mispronunciation, sure. you know? Mm-hmm. It's just like right. W-E-S-C-H, like Wesh or yeah. Weesh, yeah. Weshe, we we. Mm-hmm. I've heard so many different things, but it's always funny when people like add letters. Like they just <laughs> see it, they see the W E S, and then the rest of it like just doesn't make any sense. So their brain just jarbles it into starts Wesley. filling it. There's got to be an H in there. There's, those those letters it, all go with H. Is it Wesley? <laughs> yeah, Wesley. Is it, uh, uh-huh. Man. I've been getting automated calls recently, and this one is like, is this Daniel Weskiziel? And it's like, nope, it is not Daniel Weskiziel. No idea who that <laughs> is. Weskiziel. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, I saw you did uh, a little live stream from the, the swap the other day. Yeah. I was going to like keep going, but it was, it was, it felt a little awkward just sitting there walking around with my phone while everybody else is doing all their thing. And I'm trying to, you know, not put my phone in anybody's face and be respectful right. of people and ended up recording a lot of, you know, butts and different stuff like that too. Oh, yeah, and, I was checking out some butts. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then also it's just like, I'm looking around at all this stuff and while I'm live streaming, like, I don't really have enough hands to sit here and buy different things or whatever too. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta get busy and figure out what you're going to buy and, and, you know, experience the thing too. But yeah, that was cool that you, you brought us along for that period of time. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I I was there. Yeah. I, I saw you were there. I know Shanna showed up. I was hoping, uh, Jason Degenerate Fish Keeper would show up like right when I was showing the massive clown knife. That ghost clown ghost knife. The ghost knife was uh, mm-hmm. uh, probably like five, six inches already. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a big fish for a bag. Yeah. And I wanted to come home with all the obliquid ends too, but mm-hmm. they were all males. If it was, if it was like two males and like, three females like if there was yeah. a group that he had like breeders there i would yeah. have bought them all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did you I end up buying one anything? of those new i did buy some things i got i got one of the oblique wood ends which i believe it i mean whatever there's technically no such thing as a haplochromous oblique wood ends that was like the first fish that was discovered in the victoria basin and the sample that they have of it was like so dried up and whatever that you really can't see any coloration or anything on it at all yeah. to where it could be any of the haplochromis from the Victoria Basin. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different fish that are called the haplochromis obliquid ends. Pretty much any of the Victoria cichlids you get are either going to be called obliquid ends or like tomato haps unless you're getting from like specialized fish stores and stuff like that, they will care. I I did get one that was in a Stato Tilapia Nubilis from a, from tropical world pets, which is a fish store here. Um, and he's awesome. But if I got him from another store, he'd probably be called a tomato hap. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I got, I got one of the oblique ends. I got a, uh, a Eureka Red, which is also a Jacob Freeber guy, a, a Lunacara Jacob Freeber guy. So I, okay. I have another one of those now since I had lost the one that I got from the ACA auction. And uh, I did have a uh, Fireline Meloto. Um, but I lost him yesterday. Oh no! Sorry to hear that. And uh, today, when I came home from work, my rainbow shark was gone too. Oh and that wow! Was quite unfortunate. He was a full, like five and a half inches, almost six inches. Wow! And I mean, I, I had him for like two and a half years, 
-hmm. So I was just like, well, how long do rainbow shark live? And so I went to Google and it's like rainbow shark live four to six years, which is significantly longer than better, which live about two. I'm just like, Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. See, that's kind of what I've found when I've looked up fish species and how long they live and stuff. Yeah. I'll look something up and it says, yeah, it lives five years. I'm like, well, I've had mine for nine years or something, you know, like <laughs> that's not right. You know? And that, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know, it seems all over the place out there. And S, I think that's actually what I have is Haplochromus species number 44. Um, he's gorgeous. Let me walk you over to him. I can oh, do that. Cool. That that tank light is still on. Okay. And, uh, you got everything on timers? Yeah. But nice. this Good one's man. out in my living room, so it, it stays on a little bit longer. But he yeah, is really. right here. Oh, yeah. Very cool. He's probably my favorite new fish. He's got a light blue face, yellow body with like, they're kind of light stripes, but when he gets in like mm -hmm. breeding colors, they're like black stripes. Yeah. And then his fins are like an orange red. Yeah. Yeah. He's really cool looking. And then that's the Jacob Freeber guy right next to him as oh, well. Oh, nice. <laughs> so those are my two new fish that I got. Yeah, I don't have my rainbow shark any in here anymore. Yeah, Not quite sure what happened to him. He was just stuck to the sponge filter, looking all pale. Man, that's Sad. a bummer. And and it's yeah, it seems unusual. It, it sounds like he was pretty healthy. You know, last time oh, you saw him, oh, he was super healthy. Like yeah. last night, he looked great. And uh, even my friend that came over today, I I gave him some plants and stuff, and. He was just like, oh, man, that's so sad. Like, I was over here just two days ago, and he looked fine. I'm like, I know, right? Yeah. You he think maybe doing... it's the cichlids? Somebody, he pissed off I the wrong maybe, fishy? maybe, yeah. maybe, but, like, he's, him, my OB, and my Labidochromus aurelius are the two, the three fish that I've had in there the longest. Mm -hmm. Like I got that rainbow shark like two and a half years ago when I like set up the tank yeah. and I never had any issues with aggression with him. In fact, if anything, he was chasing the cichlids around. Yeah. They usually, they're pretty active and so, curious fishes for sure. It was just, it was really strange. Like he was eating there was, like, I don't, there was nothing, nothing wrong with him except maybe like, I don't know. Maybe after the, the one cichlid died, there was like a slight ammonia spike or something, and he was the only one that suffered from it. Yeah. But I've had yeah. other fish die in there before several times because it's an African cichlid tank. I lose fish. You know, it happens. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, Been there. Like, it, it, it's never been a problem before. It's just, it's really strange, and it's sad because, like, once again, he's one of the few fish that I had that actually had a name. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he was Robin. Like, I had I had a, my first fish that I picked out that I remember picking out as a kid was a, uh, a red-tailed shark, and I called him Batman. So oh, okay. That was like a, a throwback. Oh. oh, Robin. I thought you said ramen. Yeah. Like the, no, like Robin. The pasta. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robin. So okay. I, I had Batman when I was a kid. And so when I yeah. got back into fish keeping as an adult, I threw back to them. And I got a rainbow shark and called him yeah. Robin. Nice. Nice. That makes sense. Right on. Yeah. I don't name a lot of my fish, but yeah, my son names some of our fish and they stick. And yeah. So I got a few named fish around, but not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and that, I mean, it's unfortunate about your, yeah, those couple fish passing. It seems like I go a long time with nothing dying, and then, yeah, you get that, those two or three happen at the same time, and that, you know, they're in different tanks and unrelated, or, you know, in this, yeah, it's just kind of weird. And I had a massive shrimp die off, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's, it's kind of, it kind of hit me in a weird place too. Cause I was just talking to somebody else about how the tank is super stable, never has any issues with anything. I never do any water yeah. changes. Knock on wood, huh? 
And then all of a sudden, like I had, I look in there and I saw probably 10 dead shrimp. And I'm just like, what, what happened? And so like, I did a big water change. I pretty much sucked out like all of the water sucked out all the dead shrimp when I was sucking out the water and filled it back up. And I don't Mm -hmm. see any more bodies in there, but it's just like, yeah, it just crashed instantly. And it it is exactly like somebody said, you know, the small tanks, like it, when it crashes, like it can crash really hard, really fast. Yep. Yep. Dilution is the solution. And, uh, you know, when you got a bigger tank, it kind of dilutes itself. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. What uh, you have, uh, Neo Cardinia or a different type yeah, of shrimp? Yeah, uh, bl- blue velvet shrimp. Oh, you got some blue shrimp. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I just have uh, like the, the cherry, the red shrimps as far as the Neo Cardinia. And then I recently got into, I got some uh, crystal red shrimp, some nice. Caradinia yeah. shrimp. So, right. yeah, that's new to me. Got a uh, see, RO system to go along with that. Water, yeah. Well, yeah. See, my my water is uh, it's like 140, 150 in that range at TDS out of the tap or so. But then, yeah, I did pick up an RO system. It's just in a real small. It's like a three gallon tank. You know, it's in a real tiny tank. It's actually a tank that I made for uh, the Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, um, his like Aquascape contest. The Im- uh, yeah, I saw mm-hmm. that tank. I saw your little video about that. Oh, okay, so. nice. Thanks for checking yeah. it out. Yeah, a nice tank. Yeah, yeah. It was you know that that was uh we had adopted my wife. Uh, she had a friend, and she lived kind of up in the Seattle area, which is north of me, but. Uh, she was moving back to Australia. She's Australian and she had a beta in that thing. And so, yeah, we kind of adopted that tank and um, like all anabantoids I've ever had, I, you know, eventually I killed it. Um, <laughs> I try to kind of stay away from those these days. Although now I have an RO system. So I don't know. I was thinking about maybe trying some again, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, I like my anabantoids. Yeah, do you? What uh, what kinds do you um, keep? Right now, I just have you know have beta, you and I have a king beta. But I've had honey gourami, and I had gouramis when I was younger. Like mm-hmm. I'm just a big fan of anabantoids in the way that they have the bubble nests, and I think that's yeah. just a very very interesting way of breeding. And- yeah, it's fascinating when they start building those and stuff. Yeah, people that don't know, like coming your tank's all foamy on the top, and now he's he built that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. He did that. Good job, <laughs> buddy. Nux. <laughs> well, the the one I'd like to keep again that I really liked, and and maybe like next summer I'll just try to keep them outside or something. Is the paradise fish? Yeah, we mm. have uh, albino paradise fish. In those the I I kind of like to try those next time because those are cool looking. I think the albinos yeah. the 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 regular ones they kind of remind me of a like an American flag they're the red white and blue you know yeah kind of uh-huh. yeah yeah so the albinos are like you know white with like red stripes and yeah yeah red some finish. orange red mm-hmm. yeah it's awesome yeah yeah I might go that might be my thing next spring for sure yeah yeah that the tiny tub that I had has just been a failure yeah i know yeah you've i saw before you did some stuff on a live stream of yours and and we're showing some out to outside stuff so you, yeah you... I, I think it's just uh it's just not a big enough basin or whatever to where when the wind comes in really hard it just messes up the substrate and everything and just screws everything up and mm-hmm. i've I've come out days where the driftwood has just been knocked way over and the rocks have all fallen over. And it's just like, yeah. did an animal do that? Did the storm do it? Like, Yeah, what's going on? And like the fish haven't really been successful in there. And so like it was fun to do. And it just did not work at all the way that I hoped it would. And... 
I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm kind of new to all that outdoor tubbing stuff. I set set up this kind of just a it was like a forty gallon storage bin basically this year, and basically I just I threw in some driftwood to. There's one piece that I've been trying to sink for years now, so it's it's in there, and then I put some other pieces of driftwood on top of it to to weigh it down. And then I put floating plants over the top of it. And that's that's kind of all I did. There was no substrate in there at all or anything. Yeah. And I think like looking back, like my the in-ground pond that I have has just been so easy to work with, other than the little leak that I have now and having to top it off every so often. Like yeah. it's been really easy to work with. I never have to clean it or anything. And the uh i had a kitty pool out there like last year when oh, i really? had a roommate and there was like some goldfish and a couple of guppies in there and we were just running it off of a marine land hang on the back filter just sitting on the nice. side of it nice it was working great really it was super clear there's water hyacinth growing and everything uh -huh. nice and so I'm just like, okay, well now, you know, set up a tiny tub and I'm going to like aquascape it and all that other stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think that's where I really just like messed up was like, I was trying to design it like it was something that was inside, right. not thinking about how the external elements are just going to constantly screw everything up no matter how much you try and do it a certain way. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so lesson learned for sure. Like, I think I'm going to get, you know, keep doing tubbing. I'll probably, you know, fix up the kiddie pool again next year. Because right nice. now it's just full of frog bit. And yeah. it, it looks awesome on the outside, but man, it, it, it kind of smells. It's, it's going to be pretty nasty on the inside. Bit. Mm -hmm. So I might, yeah. you know, clean it out and get that set back up next year. But yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to do that tiny tub again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, that storage bin I had, I filled it up like too much, I think. And like the end of it cracked. And so I bought like a little, uh, uh, stock tank and I was going to put it like in the ground, kind of like yours. Of course, our, our ground around here is very, very, very rocky. So I'm not looking forward to that and I haven't done it yet, but I have like a, uh, comet goldfish, like a feeder goldfish, that lives out there nice yeah so yeah i wanted to get him you know get it into the ground so hopefully he he can survive the the winter and everything yeah see what happens i mean man those goldfish are crazy in what they can survive though yeah 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 just icing over water and stuff like that and like I've i heard, swear you know, i swear some of my goldfish were like half their body like exposed to the air just like whatever when it was winter just everything was covered in ice i just i threw snow in there just to fill up the empty space and it's like all those fish are dead no way yeah and they they all lived they, they all <laughs> lived. That. wow yep yeah, that's actually one of our named fish. It's uh, his name is George. He used to live in my garage, and <laughs> and now yeah, he's out. He's outside. But yeah, I gotta. That's a good reminder. I gotta dig a hole and <laughs> put that tub down in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and I also plan to you know make the pond a lot bigger next year too, so that yeah. you know I don't have to get rid of my koi. I like my koi. Uh huh. Yeah. It's a yeah. white butterfly koi, and I don't know if it's male or female, but it's it's so beautiful. Ah, dang it, They're... cat! <laughs> uh, sure, blame it's it on the cool. cat. On my lap, and then just decided to just jump off and got hooked on the cord. <laughs> That's how cats are, man. Yeah. So you have, you know, beyond. Let's see, you got fish. You got a gecko, you Let's got see, a cat, I, I and have, you have a bird too, right? I have two parakeets, I have okay. a golden gecko, I have a cat, I have 18 fish tanks, I have an indoor pond, and I have an outdoor pond, and I have the tub. 
and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good to me, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a lot of work, especially mm-hmm. you know with the garden and all that too. Like trying to maintain all this, it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, oh, and a full time job too. Mm-hmm. Like we used to do so much when I was a kid, but it was like there was five of us kids and my parents, and yeah. uh, so a lot of the the work was just like done by us kids mainly, and my dad. They had too, some cheap so. labor. Yeah. So it, and then it's like my sister is like she's a stay-at-home mom but she's got her little farm with her five kids and yeah my brother-in-law just like works full-time and all that too so i kind of like look towards them and you know want to you know kind of live more off the land a lot like them too and it's but man it's like it's really hard for one person Mm -hmm. to do all this stuff (laughs) yeah that's a lot of stuff but it keeps you out of trouble right oh yeah it definitely keeps me out of trouble i i don't really do much of anything else so (laughs) nice so what kind of uh what kind of uh stuff you grow in your garden i think you had some peppers or something right i'm a huge fan of spicy peppers nice and uh I really like to grow fragrant herbs as well, you know, thyme and basil and Mm -hmm. dill and lots of different types of herbs, peppermints. Um, I actually, I had a peppermint and a chocolate mint plant that I hybridized into uh, chocolate peppermint. Oh, no way. uh, The the little Andes plant. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And so whenever I take a trimming of it or... It's kind of spread out in, a little bit into my yard. So whenever I mow over that certain area, Whoa. it smells like a York peppermint patty. It's, you it's just amazing. get that aroma. Huh. Interesting. Um, nice. And uh, I I have black, uh, thornless blackberries and I have blueberries. And then I have a lemon tree that I'm, I got this year that I'm trying to grow. I'm going to have to bring it inside over winter. Okay, okay. I was going to ask about that. I don't know about lemon trees in St. Louis. I got one last year. Okay. And I brought it in over winter, and it was doing fairly good for a while. And then I messed up with something. I think mainly it just wasn't getting enough light. Right. To where it didn't make it over winter. To where I bought Mm -hmm. another one this year. I'm going to try again. I plan to, like, hook up, like, a whole like double spotlight directly on it. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask if you're going to put it by, you know, a different window or where it gets morning light or. Unfortunately, I don't have a South facing window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my house is actually unlike, unlike a lot of houses that all tend to face like Northwest, South or East. My house faces uh, like Northeast. Oh, okay. Yeah. My street is in an angle. So, Mm-hmm. My windows are all sort sort of weird angles. I don't have any good one for a lemon tree. Yeah, we're in a cul-de-sac, so like a, our, our, a our southern... house faces a weird angle, too. Yeah, if you have like a, a southern sunroom, that's perfect for a lemon tree. You can grow it indoor year-round if you have the, that yeah. going on. <laughs> How big do I those mean, lemon trees get, do you know? Um, I mean... I guess you could probably prune it to to kind of train. You can it prune to... it to kind of keep it compact and all that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. bonsai, whatever. But right. unlike fish, plants <laughs> pretty much grow to the size of their container. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a it's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can uh, if it gets bigger, you can put it into a bigger pot and it'll get bigger. But yeah, yeah you can continue to trim it down. And mm-hmm. it'll get wider, and so you can kind of keep it compact and just keep trimming it. Yeah. And they respond fairly well to trimming. You can actually, you know, design your tree and have like a perfectly round lemon tree if you want. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that now that you mention it. Uh-huh. And th- there's some people that do that. If you if you look up Meyer lemon tree on Google, I'm sure you'll see a lot of those designer ones that have the fun shaping and all that stuff mm-hmm. with some lemons on them. <laughs> Reminds me of one time, like I have this Japanese maple and it was getting out of control. 
and I wanted to trim it up, but I wanted to just, you know, do a little quick Google research on trimming a Japanese maple. And then, holy crap, you know, it gets into all these like traditional Japanese gardens. And they yeah. said that like people you to, to trim a Japanese maple in a Japanese garden in Japan, basically you had to stand there and watch somebody else do it for like 10 years before you're allowed to get get a hold of the clippers even touch the clippers yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. it oh, was yeah. crazy yeah so i just go down this whole separate rabbit hole and then kind of <laughs> just just trimmed it how i thought anyways and it, it seemed to work out yeah yeah the best thing when it comes to trimming just don't overthink it but yep. also don't trim too much away yep yep indeed yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you like, uh, hot peppers and stuff and, and it, have you ever made any like hot sauces? Yeah. I, uh, I, I should have like, I'm no good at like putting things into like actual, like measuring containers and like getting a full measurement of stuff and writing down recipes. So I made a really awesome sauce like three years ago and yeah. But you don't know Hades how you made it? Honey. I called it Hades Honey. It was pretty much like it was ghost peppers. And it's it wasn't pure ghost peppers, though. So I took the ghost peppers and I soaked them in Everclear for like okay. a week. Mm -hmm. And then I dumped the Everclear out. And so that took some of the heat out of the ghost peppers. And then I just had this bright red Everclear that I actually cooked down into just the ghost pepper oil. And so I use ghost pepper oh, wow. extract and a lot of other things. I really enjoyed that mm -hmm. actually more than just the peppers themselves. I love that. And extract. that I'd imagine that extract goes a long way. It's a little bit of it goes a oh, long right. way. Yeah. I, I like to buy like a jar of pickles from the grocery store and I'll put like three four drops in like a good sized jar and oh, that nice. jar of pickles will be hotter than uh the jalapenos you buy from the store mm -hmm. wow yeah yeah i, I believe it. jalapenos now like yeah. fresh one. but right. uh, okay yeah um but yeah i really like to make the extract and so i made this hades honey and so it was the hades reduced honey. ghost peppers it had it had some uh, Thai, uh, big Thai peppers in there also, and a couple red jalapenos, and then it was a whole bunch of honey. And do you I think, think that did, like the sweetness of the honey kind of balances out the hot part too? Yeah. So the the sweetness of the honey it actually takes away some of the heat. Like that's how you. So the Scoville scale is how many times they have to add like sugar water to oh, it in order to reduce measured, the huh? heat. Okay. Or like it, okay. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that. I don't think it's yeah. actually like sugar water, but, but it's something like, sweet. The sweetness Saffron. actually cancels yeah. out the heat. Hmm. Okay. So that's why, you know, haban mango habanero is mm -hmm. a really good combination because mangoes are very very sweet yep. and habaneros are hot and so when you mix them together it it kind of cancels it out but you still get that heat from the habanero but mm -hmm. it's not like overpowering mm -hmm. um, yep. and so yeah adding the honey not only made it like a really nice thick sauce but it also uh you know reduced the heat even more and so I'm just like cooking it over the skillet, just like slow cooking it, all these peppers and the honey. I added garlic and onion and nice. Uh, mm, sounds delicious. Um, vinegar. Mm -hmm, and sure, yeah. Generally some vinegar and hot sauces, a lot of it, usually. Some salt, of course. Mm -hmm. A little bit of just a little touch of sugar. And uh, even though I was adding so much honey, I just added just a touch of sugar. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. And uh, I just slow cooked it for a good long time, just kind of tasting it as I go. And it's like, needs a little bit more honey and all that. And, but then like this next time, oh no, and I added, I added ginger. 
added some ginger to it. Oh, yeah, nice. That, that sounds like, like a good that. It was a little bit of ginger. Mm-hmm. But then, like, this last time that I made it, I added I added more ginger. I added some turmeric this last time. Give it a little bit of a difference. And yeah. it didn't taste the same at all. But I still called it Hades Honey. And uh, uh, Yeah. But, I mean, it was still really good. And then I also made another mm-hmm. sauce off of the uh, the big Thai peppers. I made, like a like, a sweet Thai chili sauce. And... It tastes oh, almost nice. exactly the same as the sweet Thai chili Doritos. It's oh, just okay. like 10 times spicier. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. If mm-hmm. not, well, probably a hundred times. Probably a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah, been I, it I, so far. I do make a lot of pickles too. That's what I really like to do is make, you know, spicy dill pickles. I'll mm-hmm. just take one ghost pepper and just add it to the entire jar, and that that jar is good to go. Well, that's all you do. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So just let it, let that yeah, uh, I mean, vinegar just kind of infuse yeah, everything. The only ingredient that I don't make myself is the vinegar, and it's not that I don't know how to make the vinegar. It's just like it's not really worth it, and you mm-hmm. know. You have to like balance the acidity perfectly too. If you if you just let it sit there, it's just gonna drop like crazy. You have to. It's much easier to just buy vinegar. Yeah. So yeah, and that's it's and pretty cheap, cheap anyway. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like I grow the cucumbers, I grow all my own herbs and spices, and so it's just like you know my pickles that I made last time were the spices that I used was uh, I used dill, purple sage, purple basil. Uh, purple basil, huh? Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Himalayan pink salt. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, garlic, onion, and uh, curry oh i had i had an actual curry plant oh an actual and, curry uh, plant interesting yeah um i didn't know it was a thing but it it, it smelled like curry and it's like wow that's cool mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so I, I added a little bit of that to it and uh man those are some good pickles and yeah just like one ghost pepper in each jar is all it took and it was perfect yep do you see S's comment there that you should sell your pickles? I sh- I know I've I've had plenty of people tell me I should sell my pickles and rice wine vinegar. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I used. S was rice oh, okay. wine vinegar. Nice. Um, well, rice vinegar was what I made for what I used for the the sauces to give them that extra like Asiany kick. But then the mm-hmm. the the uh, the wine vinegar I added a little bit of that into one of the jars of pickles, and uh, no no it wasn't wine vinegar I added balsamic vinegar oh into really one instead of white vinegar interesting and it was interesting yeah it was it wasn't bad for it wasn't sure bad for yeah but uh-huh. it was, they they were definitely like a different sort of like a uh, well it's a got a richness sweetness. right. Yeah, yeah, like a rich, warm sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. Warm. And yeah, that's good. Just it would have been really good as like an ingredient in a salad, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. Just to like eat them plain was just like... A little strange. Ah, not, it, it was just a little strange. I mean, I, I'm picky. I just want like, you know, dill pickles for the most part, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When people get extra fancy with some of these and the sweet pickles and stuff like that it gets a little funky to me and mm-hmm. like there's yep. some people that they make sweet pickles and they actually add like a packet of kool-aid into their brine mix oh and really people have like strawberry sweet dill or strawberry sweet pickles or something like that it's like that just sounds gross yeah that sounds nasty but yeah, people people love that stuff. And I mean, you know, do, maybe you know, a few like made it into a relish then, and then like put it on some things. I could see it then, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, otherwise that sounds nasty. Dill pickles. And yeah, yeah spicy and then, dill pickles. And then I pickled good. some I pickled some peppers too, because I grew a couple peppers that weren't like super spicy peppers. I grew Hungarian wax peppers, which are they're hot banana peppers. Oh, okay. They're, they're not hot at all. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I pickled a whole bunch of those and uh I let them uh kind of grow out into like a whole rainbow. So there was like two that were red, three that were orange, and like three that were like yellow. And then I chopped them up into little bottle caps. And so it's just a kaleidoscope of the different colors in the oh, jar. Yeah, and yeah just, sounds I like a pretty just, jar. Did base, just basic pickling of, you know, mm -hmm. water, vinegar, a little bit of garlic and onion to give a little bit extra flavor. But most of the flavor is just coming from the peppers themselves. And oh, those were good to just, you know, munch on, mm -hmm. to throw on top of a hot dog, yeah, uh, for sure. on top of a burger, whatever. They were so mm -hmm. good. Nice. Nice. That sounds tasty. That sounds tasty. Um, have you ever made a gardenera? I don't know if I'm even saying that correctly. It's like the it, I don't think you're vegetables. saying it correctly, yeah. but I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. It's, it's like the pickled vegetables. Gardenera. They put them on those, like... Uh, what is it? Hot Italian beef sandwiches and stuff. Oh. I think it's like a Chicago thing. I oh, I know what you're talking about. That like bright green stuff that they put on like the Chicago. No, that's Chicago no, style. Bro. No, it's just like it's no, like it's uh, they use a lot of like uh, cauliflower and and carrots in there and stuff. It's like. Pickled I'm vegetables, good. basically. Yeah. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> I, I wanted to make one of those, like, hot Italian beef sandwiches, so I just bought some commercial stuff of that. And, I, yeah, I think, I, I don't know, I just called it Gardenera, but I'm not sure if that's correct, like I said. But I, it was actually a – I thought it was a pretty good snack, you know? Yep. It just sounds like. <laughs> Another version of coleslaw or something. <laughs> yep. Even... Yep. Well, I guess I mean I think it's been over an hour here. We should probably yeah. wrap things up. I appreciate you coming oh. in. Oh, I see Susan's coming in now. Ciao, ciao. Or ciao, going ciao. out, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if she's talking about eating or leaving, but either way, enjoy. <laughs> Danny, thank you so much for being on here. Anything, any parting words or anything you want to say that you hadn't said already? Uh, I mean, not really. Um, I was asked to be a guest on the Aquatic Morning Show on Friday morning. So oh, that's sure cool. Tune in to the Aquatic Morning Show on Friday. Right on. And, yeah, um, so that'll be on the uh, main Yes, this channel, Mains, Tails, yeah. Furs, and Fins. Mains, Tails, Furs, and Fins. Cool. At, what is that? 10 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, 10 a.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, man, like, thanks for having me on. This was fun. And I don't think there was a single dead moment of air. That's That's awesome. Yeah, you, you well, you did a great job. You made it easy for me. You, you you talked about all of that cool stuff, and I really enjoyed having you here. Uh, thank you for all the the people in the chat that were you know hanging out. I know we didn't interact with you guys a a whole lot, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream and all the people that watched the replay, mods, everybody, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody.